and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancement. Because of the faith kingdom. must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Your unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenlies. The pastor that understands headship without plurality will not be listening to suggestion. He will not take advice from anybody. He is king. Don't tell me what to do. But I heard in heaven that God said, let us vision casting. Everyone said, let us. <laughs> Wouldn't you like a God that says, let us? Eh? Can you imagine that on earth, even though he created you, are not the one he was creating it. He carried dominion and entrusted to us here. And we not do anything without consulting us here. Not necessarily. The idea is that God wants our contribution. Because once we come in, we bring a blend and a new dimension to whatever he's doing. Now watch, watch this. So he wants to eliminate Ahab, the king. Ahab has been a problem in Israel. He calls eldership in heaven, a meeting in heaven. He said, what shall we do? Everyone say, we do. That's the kind of government we need in Nigeria. A problem will be solved. A lot of people thought theocracy means one man, anything you just wake up, you know, whatever. There will be problem. There won't be safety. What shall we do that we may entice Ahab that he will go to Ramogile and die? That they want him to go to war and die in that war. What shall we do? And the problem heaven is having is that the man has carried God's prophet, put them on payroll. Carry Professor Ba, put them on payroll. So if the devil finds a secret, he informs him. If the devil doesn't know, God's prophet will inform him because God said, I cannot do anything except I reveal the secret to my servants, the prophet. So if you show the prophet, they show the bad guy. So each time they create where he will die, he will die by accident. The prophet will tell him, God is waiting for you there. He will escape through the other roads. Bad president, bad whatever, sometimes can surround themselves with men of God who help to prolong their life and their days on the throne. Meanwhile, they are evil. There are some of them that are that wise. Ahab was like that. And there's one man of God in the midst of all the men of God there who was so angry with his evil deeds that he refused to cooperate with him. His name was Micah. And God told Micah, come up. And hear what is going on in heaven. Because I can't do it on earth until I show it to somebody on earth. One of my prophets. Come and see what we are doing in heaven. Attend this meeting. I want you to see. And Micah sat there and was watching government of heaven meeting over a man on earth. You see some of the prayers you pray causes a meeting to be scored in heaven. What are we going to do? The intercessor have just asked for teller to be arrested. How do we arrest him? The eclipse caught him. <laughs> it's true. Major global events happened as a result of that eclipse. I recorded all of them. Because I'm a historian. So, uh, for future generations. I know some of you don't learn anything from some of these things. <laughs> One of the job of this eclipse was to reverse the impact of slavery on Africa. Now, let me tell you because I know about the intercessors the aspect they focus more is on the judgment and most of the intercession let the witches not manipulate these let all that. I'm not bound by all those kind of teachings the truth is there is a positive side to what happened what happened is this the root of slave trade is the same root that Eclipse followed the roots were two the ones that we all are more acquainted with is the the bunny camp the major port there. Then we have the Badagri. Then we have the notorious Ghana port. If you go to Fiji Island now, the national religion, except for what God is doing there in recent time, is Voodooism. Because over 90% of the people that made up that island were moved from Togo here. 
where the national religion is Voodooism, and they carried them there, planted them there, and they took their sign. Of course, record I show that even in the course of transporting them, sometimes they will use a Fiji and break a white man's hand, carve something on wood. I'm telling you, maybe where they are trapped, they are head, whatever. They just see the man, they just carve something. The man won't know, he think he's just play. When he finishes carving it, he just break the two legs. <laughs> I'm glad for what TBN wife is doing, the beauty hospital, and the changes. God is doing a lot of things in, in that place. Fiji, look at Brazil from where the eclipse started. The people they moved from Badagri here, many of them, majority of them were dumped in that place. As, you know, this is South America. We're talking about black conclaves. South America and those islands that surround it, which you call the Caribbeans, Bahamas, St. Kitts, St. Fade, Trinidad and Tobago and Baba. These are black. If you go there, you think you're in Africa, except for some of them that are, whose economies are doing well, like Bahamas and a few. But some of them you get there, they are worse than Africa. You see the condition of living on human beings. A whole Fiji doesn't have up to five ambulances. A whole nation. His church, TBN, raising ambulances to be sending to them and some other things. That's where you see witches that fly by day. <laughs> because the missionary that went there, uh, telling me personally, a woman, she, she's American, white American, telling me personally, a particular jungle they passed through, where you see dead bodies, zombies, and then they do certain things, and these things get up. Dead or they are dead, they get up, and they are smelling, and they are coming. And you better know the God of Abraham that day. <laughs> now, Brazil, where they move a lot of people from Badagri here, they still speak Yoruba tea today, as I'm talking to you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? They hold these their festivals, annual festival, and they still worship the same gods here. Last year, one of our ministers was telling them, yes, and when you worship the God of your fathers, the things will be better for you there was selling idolatry for that. Because they hold this, this thing annually. And even some people travel from here and the other. And then when it's the turn of some of the major festivals here, some of them come down, plus other nations, including whites. And then some of them are product of intermarriages between the African Americans and the other races. But here is the positive side, which is what I wanted to see. And then I'll conclude with the leadership side. Here is the positive side. Eclipse talks about judgment on one side, but it talks about divine visitation on the other side. The positive side right now is that the most powerful revival on earth is going on right now in Southern America. That revival has been hid from the rest of the world because of language barrier. When it was revival in Indonesia, colonized by the British people, it was easy to record it, people were going to see, because you services are in English, and then interpreted in local language. When revival was in South Korea, Yongicho and all the people, people were traveling from all over the world, Nigeria, US, everywhere. Why? Colonized by the English-speaking Americans, and then it was easy. Schools, everything is in English, translated in Korea, or even if you find a church preaching in Korea, interpreting in English. So it was easy. Yongicho books are in English. In Brazil right now, in Argentina, in Sao Paulo, in uh, Colombia, Colombia of all people, which, which is you find on the northern end, Colombia of all people, the city headquarters of drug is experiencing a major revival now. Cesar Castellos, the leader of the G12 movement now, which is the most deadly movement on the surface of the earth right now, is more deadly than what Young Chose spearheaded, is right there from Colombia. This G12 now is changing the history of the world and the way church is done all over the world. It's right there. But look at the one that is happening in Ukraine with Sunday Adelaide in Nigeria. The problem is you travel there, services are in Russia. You can't hear what they are saying. People will hardly go. All the books, over 50 books the man has written, they are all in Russia. It's recently, some people have succeeded in translating about four or five. 
Last time he, he was in Nigeria early this year, he was still begging for those who will help translate because even the man doesn't speak English as well. When he started preaching, he would tell you, I speak Russian. I was 19 when I left Nigeria and I've lived all my life there. The language I know now is Russia. He hardly speaks Yoruba very well. He hears it, but speaking it is a struggle for him. His first language is Russia. Then he speaks English, you know. The wife herself is pastoring a church of 6,000 people. The lady I'm talking about is a young girl. But how come that thing, the world has not been able to assess it for many years because of the language barrier? But thank God he's a Nigerian with the English connection and then, you know, and the effort some people are making now to translate most of his works. That's what is happening. In Brazil, in Argentina, they call for revival, one million people, just for prayer meeting. Right now, South America, Africa, and Asia is the program of God. And that is what God marked for the world to see on Wednesday. This is where my move is. What is going on right now in Africa and the key places in Africa, like if you notice where he entered, when from Brazil he crossed at the Atlantic, he just came to the trigger of Africa. You know all the prophecies about this continent and the role Nigeria and so Ghana will play and then the Nozo, which is South Africa and all that. He just came to the trigger. That's where the light entered. That thing he was marking just entered through Ghana. The chief whatever of slavery in terms of exporting Togo which was next then Nigeria and then went not because this revival is hitting Africa it's finally going to engulf North Africa if you read the Bible the Bible said for North Africa is going to affect some nations in North Africa like Libya like Egypt the Bible said that this Egypt you see this Libya you know Egypt talks about the continent as a whole but even Egypt as you see it now this is Libya and other. One day will be called my people. And the Bible says, when North Africa is now reached, an expressway will be created between that and Israel. That's why they think past through Turkey. There is some things God will do in the Middle East. And then he headed towards Asia. And that's where it ended. And that's the program. That's the roadmap. Watch out in Asia for nations like China, India, and Russia. God is not true with Russia. Already something is boiling in Russia right now. Something with Ukraine and all that. Major move is jarring up from Russia. And what God is doing with Russia now. Like look within the last how many years. They have planted churches in Holland. In, in, in Germany. In everywhere. From that Ukraine thing. See the orange revolution has sprung from that place. And overthrew the remaining fortresses of uh, communism that was left. He started inside a church with one message somebody preached. This Nigerian guy finished preaching it. 20,000 people came in the street and marched. From there, they overthrew government. That church has passed more legislation into law than the whole of the nation put together. One church. They are taking journey. They are taking everywhere. There used to be strongholds of the enemy in Europe. And what is the mystery there? Is the same G12 movement he picked from Colombia, from Brazil, from Argentina that is creating the wave from Asia right now. In India now, it's causing such a revolution. In China, six million are getting saved every year. I have even video clips of a cell group. You see a cell group in China. When they call for crusade, some crusade is in China, people travel for three weeks to get to crusade. They will be sleeping on the road as they are riding on bicycle, some on buses, and changing buses and all that to be able to get to a cell group meeting is holding in somebody's house. People fill the whole compound, climb all the trees around, climb the roof. In one particular case, they were preaching. Somebody fell from the roof. Cell group, house fellowship. People are sitting all over your roof. All the palace and all the rooms, the compound, the trees in the whole neighborhood, the neighboring streets are filled with human beings just for cell group. China, because Asia, and now, the, the, one of the things happening in China, the kind of miracles they are on is that they entered Acts of Apostles. They are raising the dead like no man's business. Raising the dead now has become like healing headache. 
The same thing is happening in India. And the economies of those nations too are also turning around. The good side is that that fire that is in Brazil, that is in Sao Paulo, is crossing over to Africa. I didn't hear you well. Uh, because I know you think it's, it's not judgment. God is marking his territories where his move and focus is. It's not judgment. But on the other hand, he's also bringing judgment on the other end because it's a two-edged sword though, to capture the wicked. Some of the ancient gladiators in the land that will not allow the destiny of Nigeria to surface. They should watch out. The grave that will swallow them has been dug is already open. If they don't turn around, because you see, there is one step away from judgment. It's called repentance. A man that is so close like this can still escape it. Some of them, you know, uh, some of those old whatever that will not want to allow this nation. They think with their economic power, with their political influence, they can. The truth is, this territory is under the watchdog of heaven. That's why we too, as God's people, must rise to our responsibilities in praying for the land, in praying for, because that's all we have to do. The heavenly watchers will do their job. If they have to strike Nebuchadnezzar mad, they will strike him mad. If they have to strip him naked, they will strip the one they need to kill, like Belshazzar, they will kill him. But this realm is not under the prince of Persia or the dark god, the god of the Niger. God has a program and a purpose for this nation. And nobody can stop it. The Bible said that you might know that the God of the heavens relates the affairs of the earth. And when it comes to the issue of the thrones, he giveth it he to whomsoever he will it. And he can appoint the basis of men, put him there. Concluding with one or two thoughts on the leadership side. If you play your part as a moon and position your Self rightly in whatever relationship you find yourself because whenever you are in a relationship no matter the relationship even covenant relationship is not usually between two equal when it comes to authority we have a covenant with God but it has not made us that you know we are heirs of God joint heirs with Christ but the Bible clearly defines that Jesus is the head of the church the husband and wife are co-heirs of the grace of life. But the Bible clearly defines that the husband is the head of the wife. In the body of Christ, we are all equal in the sight of God. But the Bible declares that the shepherd is the head of the congregation. If you get to where you are walking, and it's a boss or a chairman or whatever, the same way, if you take your position and you reflect, don't go into a marriage where you are not willing to reflect the glory of who covers you. That's why marriage is done by the decision of the leader but also by the acceptance of the wife. That's why it's even God. Have you noticed that Christianity is not by force? It's whosoever will it. Whosoever believes it. It's a proposal that God gives but you accept. Marriage is a proposal. A man says he loves you. He proposes to God. Said he loves us. He's laid down his life and he gives us a proposal. If you accept you enter into covenant with him, into this marriage. But the terms also include that the wife, the one that plays the role of the moon, should be the one in a state, in a position of submission and reverence. And then there will be order in the system. And if there is a rebellion, a, a disruption of that order, that is called rebellion and it results in judgment. When nations pull out from under the government of God, that's results in judgment. America that has not known much of these disasters just began to see recently. There are reasons for that. That nation has been protected and covered by God for hundreds of years. But of course, like a rebellious wife, they have started kicking against their husband. Is a nation under God. The way a woman can submit herself to a man in a covenant relationship, that's how a whole nation can be brought into covenant with God, submitted to God, to be God's people, why God becomes their God. And the destiny of that nation changes from that day forward. 
is the same thing with the team of leaders and leadership. So if you notice, you notice that there is mutual agreement from two ends. It's not just that a man wants. If the woman doesn't want, the marriage will not hold. It's not just that the woman wants. If the man doesn't want, the thing will not hold. But then, even when a covenant has to occur, like the case of David and Jonathan, First Samuel chapter 23 made a statement. I, I don't want to read it, but I will tell you that. When that covenant was caught between the two, something had to happen. Because if you leave them on equal basis, and then finally Saul dies, there will be two kings in one nation. There is no such thing. So, Jonathan said to David, I think for your sake, I will show you this. Turn to First Samuel chapter 23. Verse 17. Let me read it for you. Do not fear. That's Jonathan talking to David. He said to him, do not fear. Verse 16 said, Jonathan saw his son arose and went to David in the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And then he said to him, do not fear. For the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king of over Israel and what will happen to me and I shall be next to you even my father Saul knows that can you this is the man that is supposed to be king go this is what it takes to build strong leadership in church I want you to notice as at this time David was the pauper Jonathan was a prince just watch how covenant is done because it could be in a marriage as at that time, the woman earns more money. The man earns less money. Just watch you. But you agree to marry that man. The woman is the one that has gone. She has a doctorate degree. The man just passed secondary school. If you agree to marry that man, the woman is the speaker of the house of national assembly. And the man has not even won an election, local government election. If you agree to marry that man, the woman is the bank manager. The husband is an applicant. If you agree to marry that man, the first thing you must understand is you have to be willing to become the moon. If your head does not correct because you think you have the money, because Jonathan now has the power, he could kill him, he has the army, he has the resources, he has the influence. The, he was the one that gave David his clothes. He was a shepherd boy wearing strings. He, he gave him sword. He gave him almost everything. But he knew that according to God, he, God said, this is the one I want. The implication now is, even though I'm first, he is coming last. But God said, this is the one I want. Eh? There is no need. You will be the leader. I will be your wife. You'll be the sun, I'll be the moon. That agreement, you can have covenant. If it's not defined, you are looking for problem. People think it just means lose association. It's not. John and Jesus had the same challenge. The first place in Gabriel went was not to Mary, it was to Elizabeth. Six months after going to Elizabeth, he comes to Mary. The first to be born was not Jesus, it was John. It was John. The first to start ministry was John. Multitudes were going to him. The first to start baptizing people was John. The first person to preach the gospel of the kingdom was not Jesus, it was John. Finally, Jesus comes. John chapter 3, I think I need to show it to you. Verse 30. Everyone really will be one to go. He must increase. But what will happen to me? This is exactly what Jonathan did to David. This guy had power to mess up the ministry of Christ. People have believed in him. Check. His priesthood is from the Aaronic priesthood. His father is Zachariah, a Levite. The children of Israel believe in that order because Moses established it. They don't believe in this Jesus talk. This guy uses all his influence, all his position, all his power because he recognizes that there is something God is doing here. He's God. He uses all that, humbles it down to point to somebody else. It's not from the tribe of Levi. It's not anything 
to point the whole nation to him. And in pointing the whole nation to him, he looked like his ministry was losing. Some of his disciples one day he said, Behold, the Lamb of God left him and joined Jesus. If you want to know the discussion going on here, let me show you. Let me show you. Verse 25. There arose a question between some of John's disciples and Jews about purifying. That's baptism. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptized, and all men go to him. They are trying to steer jealousy and quarrel between the two preachers. The church is growing. Everybody is flogging there. And you better get ready. The multitude error is right now at our doorsteps. But anyway, they said to him, the man you've been telling us that is, everybody is going to him. Oh, the guy is pulling crowd now. And John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from where? From heaven. He yourself bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ. He could have said I am the one. He could have said it. Jonathan could have sided with Saul. Let's fight this guy. He wants to take the throne. Uh, immediately after my father, I'm the next. He yourself bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. He that had the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bride, you see the position he takes. That is the best man. I can't kiss the bride, but I can only stand there and support the bridegroom. He decides to take a second position. He that has a bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, we standed and heard him, rejoicing greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase. I must decrease. Everyone said, said he must increase. I must decrease. If you are in leadership, that's the position you take. As it relates to Jesus Christ, that's the position you take. As you begin to take that position, the glory of God starts coming upon you in measures that will blow your mind. In marriage, you are a wife, that's the position you take. No matter how influential you are, how powerful you are, like Akunili, you can be so powerful, stop drug lords, do all that. But when you get home, it's just one man. Thank you, darling. If not for you, I will not be. Without your support, I will not be who I am. You know that I'm shining in society. It's your light that I'm reflecting. You may be a quiet man, but you know I'm just there to speak your voice. I want to thank you for giving me the privilege to serve government and to bring honor to this family. People who want this woman, they say so tough. How does he submit to this man? After all, she has more degrees than him. She has worked in the World Bank, maybe the Minister of Finance. How can he be submitting to this man that is an ordinary lecturer? That's what Pastor Beam did and did so well. Shined around the world. One time they went for a program in UK. The pastor just praised her, praised her, spent time, finished praising her, and just recognized the presence of the husband and then called her to preach. He said, I cannot preach because you were giving all the honor to me, but what you don't know, my friend, is that without this man, I will not be here. All the things you people hear me, I teach, he taught me. The truth is that what you're hearing from me is iceberg of the revelation that is hid in the man, and it's true. And she will say, and he finished doing all that. He now told the people to recognize the husband. He said, my mentor, my father, my pastor, my dad, my dad. He said, apart from Jesus Christ. By the time she finished that, the power of God fell on the congregation. Marriages already have started getting healed and all that. Before she said anything, what is this? Is the same thing about the Holy Spirit. You get up there, claim that you are the one when you finish suffering. I've tried it before. You lay hands on headache, headache will be looking at you like this. You lay on anything, will be looking at you. But you honor him. You honor the Holy Spirit. You recognize the Lord. You exalt him before the people. All of a sudden, there is no struggle. The thing is just happening, just without any struggle. If you notice, what John did to Jesus is what Jonathan did to David. Jonathan said, let me decrease so that David can increase. I say, what is hard to find among human beings today? That's what God wants a wife to do. Now watch, there are friends, oh, 
and those of you who marry your friend you find it hard to submit to them you might even be older than that guy if you agree to marry him make up your mind from day one submission is not based on age do you know that that's the same thing jesus did to the father bible said though he was equal with god he counted it no robbery to take a second position but humbled himself and took the position of a servant and was obedient to the man you are equal to even obedient unto death therefore god has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things under the earth that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father and paul in starting that said let this mind be in you which was first in christ take the same kind of attitude jesus took take it it will bring you to your destination Let's bow down our heads and pray. day Peter decided to tell Jesus you are not going to the cross fire be from you Jesus said you have become a demon because that's what the devil does he absorbs authority he takes over the driving seat he's supposed to be the conductor helping the driver but he will not be content with his position he will grab the steering and wants to take over anytime you are moved to take over is demonic spirit that is moving you it's demonic spirit it's demonic spirit it's demonic spirit. Some, some think this leader, he doesn't know what he's doing. That's why you are his backup support. His extra eyes. You can bring suggestion, help, give him further. But when you finish, leave him to make decision. And when he makes decision, stand with it. Leave him. Because he's the one giving the final response of making that decision. When Adam made the decision based on what the wife said, God punished him for it. Because he has the responsibility to know when to listen and when not to take it. That thing Adam did by listening to Eve is what would have happened to Jesus if I listened to Peter. Fire be from you. Don't go to the cross. The second program of God with the second Adam will have collapsed. It will have failed again. Who knows when he got to Gethsemane. He was battling in prayer about going to the cross. It might be Peter's voice that was following him there. Maybe as a man knelt and he was remembering what Peter told him. Why will you go and waste your life over nothing? Why will you go and die over nothing? Five beef from you. We left fishing to come and follow you here. You want to ruin our hope? Because the guy can't see. He can't see what the leader sees. Talk to the Lord. If you have a team of people working with you in business, you have to communicate the vision till they understand it. You have to bring them into a state of loyalty. To the leadership and to the vision that's how you can have a business that's built on the platform of the covenant and that business will grow to any height covenant is a foundation for successful business for successful family It's a foundation for successful church and ministry It's also the foundation for a successful nation open our eyes again the lord see your word see your law in our hearts by the power of the holy spirit let this truth be plated, be born into our spirit, into our heart by the finger of God. Let none of us remain the same families, businesses, churches, cell groups, different areas of the assignments you have given us.
enemy decrease let him increase everything that has been a hindrance to your manifestation in my life every atom of pride every atom of self every atom of self glory vain glory self seeking that has been a hindrance to your revelation and manifestation in my life I lay it down today Lord I lay it down today I lay it down in a way in any way through words through action through thoughts that I obscure your glory in my life that I obscure your expression I'm born to be the express image of Christ not of myself I'm born to represent you to reveal your glory forgive us for having obscured the cross forgive us for taking the credit and the glory by my heart before your altar today Lord cut off from the foreskin of my heart everything that has been a source of hindrance everything Lord that this temple be completely consecrated to the Lord that the Holy Spirit can use it to express God's divinity and his glory to mankind it will be carried out in my life without struggle anymore. He said, my spirit shall not rest with flesh. addition is not just between husband and wife leadership and eldership that submission is expected you notice that there is a third level of it in a family the children are expected to submit in church the congregation are expected to submit so God did it this way he made it in such a way that all the other stars will have to take the back seat. Let there be one star shining on the horizon. When I began to study about space, I found out that there are some stars at the back, you get their light dimly, that are more powerful than the sun. As a matter of fact, the sun is a star. In other words, people can give birth to children who are richer than them, who are wiser than them, who are more anointed than them. But it doesn't affect their honor and their submission to parents. You can raise pastors that are more anointed than the leader. You can raise ones that are well there. It's not an issue. But all of them And I said, Lord, 
if they take back side are they not supposed to shine he said each one has a domain a territory in space that he's ruling like the sun but as it relates to divine arrangement they are to take a secondary place that's why even the moon that collects light from the sun is brighter than the stars you know why you don't select who to submit to I'll submit to my father I hate my mom you don't select I'll submit to my mom I hate my father in the same way when it comes to church you don't just submit to the head pastor and despise the team of leaders that work with him in the same thing with the family the child can't just say uh, he said honor your father and mother as long as the wife is submitting to the husband the wife will have influence over her generations you notice a moon that are overshadowed by stars a moon that have stopped collecting reflecting the glory of the sun i have noticed that whenever a woman steps out of her place finally it also brings disrespect from children starting with daughters somewhere somewhere as they get to a point you talk they talk but in those days you thought by discipling them against your husband you got their submission some of you are product of broken homes and such arrangements in your home you know after a while the woman loses her respect too when you now want to do your own thing and she wants to intervene you talk back rebellion breeds rebellion disorder breeds disorder have you been impacted by this message please share your experience with pastor david ogwele email address dominion image media at yahoo.com or call 0 6879 0803-435-7959 0803-590-9900 0805-315-3823